Yo, what's up Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers. This is No Name back at it again with another Giants video. And this is just going to be an overview of the schedule that was released last night. I think it was like last night around 8 o'clock or something. Once again, the NFL making the business decision of taking just about anything in the offseason at this point and making it into a big spectacular show. I mean, not that I blame them. There's no sports around and uh, there was a lot of money to be made by extending this. We used to be just like literally teams tweeting out what their schedule is to an entire show last night because there's nothing, you know, no other sports related things going on. So the NFL is trying to milk as much money as they can out of it. I don't blame them. Uh, it's a good business decision, but it's just annoying. Uh, there was no need for that, but let's get into the schedule. So first things first, right? First thing we all notice is that we're not starting against Dallas <laughs> for like the first time. Uh, we uh, Well, we didn't start against Dallas in 2018 when we faced the Jaguars, but outside of that, I think basically every year in the decade, we always opened up the season against Dallas in Dallas in either a 1 p.m. or like 1 to 4 o'clock games. And it's just a relief to see that we're not starting against Dallas in Dallas. In fact, we're starting at home. I uh, Also, 2018, I think, was the last time we started at home, but we're starting with a Monday night game at home. That's that's interesting. And we have another Monday night game as we get through the schedule. But, you know, first, let's talk, let's talk about the preseason real quick. Of course, we got the Jets game um, at the Jets. Then we have at the Titans, then home against Green Bay and home against the Patriots. So, you know, pretty interesting preseason setup. Uh, obviously, you know, not that many people pay attention to the preseason, but I have a feeling more and more uh, fans will be watching it this year uh, because of the, you know, the COVID situation, because there's not really anything else to watch. I think people will be a bit star for sports and they'll probably be tuning into the preseason a bit more. And also it will definitely give light into how this NFL season is going to go. Is it going to be the same as previous NFL seasons? Are there going to be changes made? Um, is there going to be some type of crowd restriction? We don't know. But, um, you know, speaking on that topic, all the dates here, you know, lean towards the fact that as of right now, the goal of the NFL is to hold the season in its regular form, you know, in its uh, regular time range and all that, unless something big happens it's it's gonna go back as usual you know business as usual but let's get into the actual season the other than the fact that i noticed we don't open it up against dallas our first six weeks something interesting that popped into my mind immediately is that this is going to be an interesting test for the offensive line without even getting into the actual teams the pass rushers we face in the first six weeks are elite we got tj watt with the steelers week one week two khalil mack and that beers defense Week three, Nick Bosa and that stout defensive line in the 49ers. Uh, week four, we got Aaron Donald, probably the best defensive player in the entire league in the Rams. Of course, we got Demarcus Lawrence and Jalen Smith with the Cowboys week five. And then week six against the Redskins, somebody that really, or a team that really was not, you know, sort of a, a, a scary pass rushing team now gets a huge upgrade with Chase Young in addition to their ranks and what is being, you know, a defensive line is being built in a very similar way to the 49ers defensive line was built. And then of course, we, you could extend it into a seven week stretch, week seven with Fletcher Cox, then Shaquille Barrett week eight. I mean, you could really say for the entire season, we're facing just pass rushers on top of pass rushers and, you know, on top of elite defensive lines and whatnot, which is one of the reasons I wanted an Andrew Thomas in the draft. But the first six weeks, you know, first eight, whatever you want to call it, it's really just going to be a punch in the mouth for the offensive line. It's going to be a tough challenge for them. Um, I, I've been said that even though I have faith in Andrew Thomas to be a franchise left tackle, I'm also realistic and I know it's going to take some time for him to acclimate to the NFL style of play, the, the quickness and how you know how faster it is than college and whatnot. And of course, they're, they're not exactly going to have a normal offseason program, a normal rookie training program, so that might play into it. Um, it's going to be a test. It's going to be kind of a, a welcome to the NFL tour for Andrew Thomas and that offensive, that new Giants offensive line, the way it's built now. Um, I'm not saying that we're going to go, you know, like 0-6 or something like that. No, that's crazy. And this is not a scheduled prediction video, by the way. I'm just talking about the schedule. But it's going to be tough for our offensive line because we're facing some pretty good pass rushers in the first six weeks. 
But let's get into the actual schedule, right? So for like the first time in, you know, the history of Monday Night Football, the Giants will be hosting two Monday Night Football games. Of course, the opener against the Steelers and then hosting the Buccaneers on November 2nd when Tom Brady and the Bucks come over to us rather than we go into them. First time in Monday Night Football history that the Giants are hosting both of their Monday Night games. We also have a Thursday Night game against the Eagles, which I'm not sure why we keep getting Thursday Night games against the Eagles, at least for like the past three, four years. It seems that we always face the Eagles in prime time, um, whether it's at home or away on a Thursday night, and we always lose against them. So I would really rather the Eagles game not be on prime time, but it is. And for the first time since 2014, the Giants' first road game will be not against Dallas. So not only are we not facing Dallas for the first time in many years to open the season, but in general, we're not facing an NFC East opponent until week five, which is Dallas. And that's a first in a long time. But in general, the way the schedule is laid out and built, I like it. It's a very nice, you know, alternating schedule of home and away games, you know, home against the Steelers, away at the Bears, home against the 49ers, away at LA. And now we do have two back-to-back -back away games here where we go away at the Cowboys, but then home again against the Redskins, away at the Eagles, home for the Bucks, away at the Redskins, home for the Eagles. Uh, and then we have a bye week in week 11, which I like. I always like late bye weeks just because I feel like um, I never want an early bye week. You know, the team is just getting back in their groove and then all of a sudden they're on break again. I like the late bye week um, because, you know, it, it's actually at a time when the team needs rests. It's like anytime it's between halfway, you know, the halfway point of the season at the end of the season, in my opinion, is better because the team is actually tired. They've actually, you know, they've gotten used to, to the NFL play again and they might need a rest. And also at the point that this is coming in, it's after, in my opinion, that first six game, the first six games, the first eight games, I think that's the toughest part of the schedule. It's definitely harder than the second half. That's just me, just because of the defenses we're going to be facing. So I like that the bye week is after that. You know, maybe they need a breather after facing all those tough defenses and then they come back strong and nice and, and they open up against the Bengals at the Bengals in week 12, which I said in my, um, I think it was my schedule odds video. The last bit I put out where uh, I, I think we have a pretty good chance at beating the Bengals. I really can't see us losing to them no matter situation. So let's say, God forbid this happens, we're like, we haven't won a single game and we enter the bye week. We come out, I still expect us to win against the Bengals just because I think we're a better team than them. So that's a nice bye week, nice placement, and then a nice soft game to open on. Of course, then, you know, this is another two away game stretch where after the Bengals will add the Seahawks which is gonna be a tough one. And then we're home for the Cardinals, another game I think we could win. Not necessarily as easy as the Bengals, but definitely one that's winnable. And then, you know, this is a two game home stretch, home versus the Browns. This is a game that I'm really excited for. I mean, there's there's tons of games I'm excited for here. I was not really um, into the Steelers game. Like I wasn't excited for that before, but now that it's on Monday night and it's the opener, that kind of just erodes my interest in the game a lot more. Um, of course, beforehand, I wanted to see the Bucks game and I wanted to see the Browns game. Those were my two, you know, the top two games that I had in mind. And they're both at home, which I think is a great advantage to us. If I do go to a game this year, it's going to be, I'm going to try and go to the Browns one. I want to go there. If Odell is still on the Browns, which I, I think he's still going to be on the Browns, that's going to be an amazing game to play. All the storylines, man. Oh, we could finally shut Baker Mayfield up, you know, show Odell we don't need him anymore. But then we got a reality check right after when we're at the Ravens, one of the best teams in the league, and we close it out at home against the Cowboys. Now, like I said, I like the way they laid out the schedule. It's very different because we really don't, I, I don't think, I can't remember the last time we haven't faced an NFC team until the first quarter of the season was finished. That's essentially what it is. For an entire quarter of the season, we don't see an NFC East team. And then we see three of them in a row, and then we go on break. And then we see them um, like another three or four games. Like I said, I think that those first eight games are really the, the tougher part of the schedule. And I, I pulled up a couple quotes here. Not going to get too much into them. Just Joe Judge. Um, of course, Giants.com. They interviewed him, asked him a little bit about the schedule. And he said what kind of embodies what I'm feeling right now. He said, I'll tell you what, when you get the schedule, it definitely does give you a little surge of energy. Uh, it stimulates a lot of conversation between all areas of the organization, support staff, coaching staff, and you start preparing immediately for it, which I have no doubt about. I mean, 
right now I'm excited just because we're looking at the schedule and part of me is glad that it's still going as planned there's no delays or anything like that within the season he goes on to say the number one positive is we're getting ready to play football so that's the biggest thing once you get the schedule it starts moving a little bit faster in your mind in terms of preparing for what's in front of you the thing we were waiting to see a little bit on was how some of the cross-country games played out that ties in a little bit to how you plan out a lot of your travel for the year which is tied into how you practice those weeks you start mapping out how you go and eat about each by week uh, through the season you know then he goes to talk a little bit more like how the team has to book hotels you know on that cross country thing and scheduling how they're going to prepare for the Thursday night game that leads into a Monday night game both a short week and then the long week you know just talking about that and then my favorite question that the, the uh, reporter as judge was if his first game on number uh, was going to be special because it's on Monday night and judge's response was for me any game is going to have the same amount of juice I think everyone is going to have a lot of energy for the opener us in Pittsburgh it's going to be a situation where look you get to play under the lights you get to play at home but it's the opening game for both teams both teams will be coming out of training camp sick of beating up each other and ready to see an opponent and you know as always given the right answer and, and I agree with him it was something I definitely didn't think about when initially looking at it I didn't realize his debut is going to be a Monday night it's going to be a spectacle it's going to be on national TV as opposed to you know the one o'clock game on Sunday or something like that so if he has a great Monday night game, it's putting the NFL on notice. Uh, not necessarily if he wins, but if he coaches a good game, a great game even. If the Giants come out, fall flat on their faces, and then, you know, we don't look prepared, we look bad, it's going to be something else that, you know, the media might blow up a little. But it's, that's going to be something interesting to look at. And I like this response as usual. But that's what I got for y'all today. Just, you know, quick overview and my thoughts on the schedule. Like I said, it's very different, but I like it because I don't think we've seen a schedule like this before. I'm really intrigued by the fact that our first, <laughs> those first six games are going to be tough for the offensive line, but we don't see any NFC East teams until the second quarter of the season. That's, that's interesting. Let me know what you guys think. Put your comments down below. Uh, any thoughts you got? What's your favorite game that you're looking forward to? I already said I'm really looking forward to Bucks and Browns, but Steelers just became really interesting, and I'm out. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Put your comments down below. Make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Until next time, I'm out. Yeah.